TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli alternate premier and defense minister Benny Gantz urges EU member states to look reality in the eyes as Iran closes in on attaining nuclear weapon capabilities. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani declares that regardless of who attains the reins of power in Washington, the future American administration will surrender to the will of the Islamic Republic. The European Union has adopted a decision to extend its existing framework for restrictive measures against Turkey in light of Ankara's unauthorized drilling activities in the eastern Mediterranean. Israeli alternate premier and defense minister Benny Gantz urges EU member states to look reality in the eye as Iran closes in on attaining nuclear capacity that would undoubtedly pose a challenge for the entire world. In a town hall briefing and Q&A session with ambassadors of EU member states, the top Israeli defense official stressed, quote, I'm certain that we all share the goal of preventing a nuclear Iran even while there might be different approaches to achieving that goal. Iran is close to nuclear capacity, and that would be a global problem more than it would be an Israeli problem. Minister Gantz further warned that Iran's quest for nuclear weapons could potentially spark a regional arms race, and not every agreement will necessarily bring about the desired outcome, while separately asserting that he has no doubt that any American administration will act to prevent Iranian nuclear capacity, whether through new or existing means. The Israeli defense minister further highlighted that while it is imperative to continue to apply maximum pressure policy on the Ayatollah regime, it is likewise crucial to communicate directly with the Iranian people. Nevertheless, Jerusalem's genuine desire for peace cannot delude us or prevent us from looking at reality in the eyes. Defense Minister Gantz also touched base on Jerusalem's relations with the European Union, saying, quote, Even though we might differ on policy and approach at times, there is a strong basis of shared values and interests. Recent events have highlighted the common challenges, like extremism and fundamentalism, and also the potential for positive change and the shift toward dialogue and normalization, which should be supported and encouraged all around. Turning to Tehran, where Iranian President Hassan Rouhani confessed that the Ayatollah regime has faced a most difficult period of hardships over the course of three years in light of Washington's policy of maximum pressure under the leadership of U.S. President Donald Trump. و بر این مردم وارد شد در تاریخ ایران من لاقل نظیرش سراغ ندارم The Iranian leader who technically serves as the chief state advisor to the Islamic Republic supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei claimed that the American policy toward the regime which he referred to as brutal and unjustified constitutes a baseless and inhumane approach against the Iranian people which contravenes any principles of human rights, international law, and regulations. President Rouhani stopped short, however, from mentioning the Islamic Republic's continued aspirations to acquire nuclear weapons capabilities, substantial investments of its ballistic missile program, and its ongoing involvement in regional conflicts by means of Shiite proxy militias. Instead, the Iranian president declared that regardless of who will be the next president of the United States, the next administration in Washington will surrender to the Iranian nation. But in this case, I am confident that the Iran will be in the end of the end. The fact that the election of America will be the result of the election until the evening or the evening will be known that it is not the case of who is the president of the United States. It is not the case of who is the president. And while the final count from the U.S. presidential elections is ongoing, 
Iranian Foreign Minister Muhammad Javad Zarif, during a visit to Venezuela, declared that the era of hegemony of the West has ended. The Iranian top diplomat who spearheads the Ayatollah regime's global propaganda campaigns further claimed that if the next American administration would change its policy toward the world, including Iran and Venezuela, the world would become a much better place. No estoy prediciendo el final de Estados Unidos o de Occidente, no. Estoy diciendo que la era de la hegemonía de, esta, de Occidente se ha terminado. La hegemonía ideológica se acabó. Occidente ya no puede pretender que puede enseñarle al resto del mundo cómo y si Estados Unidos en este periodo difícil si ellos deciden cambiar sus políticas, su enfoque del mundo, podemos tener entonces un mundo mucho mejor. Muchísimas gracias. No other news, the European Union announced this morning that it adopted a decision to extend for one year an existing framework for restrictive measures against Turkey in light of Ankara's unauthorized drilling activities, as it put it, in the eastern Mediterranean. In its statement, the European Council highlighted that the European Union will therefore maintain its ability to impose targeted restrictive measures on persons or entities responsible for or involved in unauthorized drilling activities of hydrocarbons in the eastern Mediterranean. The sanctions consist of a travel ban to the EU and an asset freeze for persons or entities. In addition, EU persons and entities are forbidden from making funds available to those listed. It is important to explain that the EU sanctions regime against Turkey's drilling activities in the eastern Mediterranean is a direct follow-up to the European Council's conclusions of October 14, 2019, which were endorsed by the Council on the 17th and 18th of October of last year, when the European Union reaffirmed its full solidarity with Cyprus regarding respect for its sovereignty and sovereign rights in accordance with international law, and invited the Commission and the European External Action Service to submit proposals for a framework for restrictive measures against Turkey. The Turkish Foreign Ministry did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Malawi in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for the United States, Armenia, the volatile situation in Europe, and persecuted Christians in Nigeria, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. Separately, I want to voice our gratitude to all of you who partner with TV7 Israel, both by means of prayer and financial support. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.